After Blenheim by Robert Sadi is an anti-war poem that strongly condemns war. Robert Sadi was a romantic poet and romantic poets focus on their own emotions, nature, beauty and in general ideal situations. He was the poet laureate which means court poet of England for 30 years. In this poem he refers to the battle of Blenheim that took place in 1704 in a village named Blenheim in Bavaria which is in the south of Germany. It was fought between England and France and in the end England won. Summary of the poem. It is a summer evening and old Casper is sitting outside his cottage door. His two grandchildren Wilhelmine and Peterkin are playing. Now Peterkin finds an object and brings it to Casper asking him what it is. Old Casper says it's a human skull. The skull of a soldier who fell in the great victory. Then his grandchildren ask him about the war. Casper tells them all about the war and repeats that it was a great victory. The children disagree with him and ask him what was so great about it, what good came out of it. Casper is unable to answer. He merely repeats that it was a famous victory. It was a summer evening. Old Casper's work was done and he before his cottage door was sitting in the sun and by him sported on the green his little grandchild Wilhelmine. The poem opens to a narrative that tells us that after finishing his work for the day, old Casper, who is a farmer, was sitting outside his cottage door, relaxing in the evening sunshine. It was summertime. Next to him, there was a patch of land covered with green grass and his little grandchild, Wilhelmine, was playing there. So we see that the setting is ideal. It is comfortable, cozy, peaceful and pleasant. Now, suddenly in this idyllic setting, there is an occurrence which we shall see in the next stanza. She saw her brother Peterkin roll something large and round, which he beside the rivulet in playing there had found. He came to ask what he had found that was so large and smooth and round. So Wilhelmine saw her brother Peterkin coming towards Casper. He had something with him. He was rolling something large and round on the ground as he came. He had found this object beside the rivulet while he was playing there. But he did not know what it was. So he had come to Casper to ask what this large, smooth and round object was. Now here we see that the poet creates suspense in the reader's minds. He does not directly state what it was. Instead, he describes it as large and smooth and round and makes it appear like a very casual object to be found accidentally by a little boy during playtime. Now this and the fact that the boy was so innocent and unaware of the horrifying reality of the object, it creates a sharp contrast between the pleasant setting and the horrors of war that are going to be described in the poem shortly after. Old Casper took it from the boy, who stood expectant by, and then the old man shook his head, and with a natural sigh, "'Tis some poor fellow's skull,' said he, who fell in the great victory. Old Casper took it from the boy, who stood expectant by. Now Casper, the grandfather, was quite old, and he had experienced many things in his lifetime. He took the object from the boy, who was completely unaware and inexperienced. The boy stood expectantly, which means eagerly waiting for his grandfather to tell him what the object was. Now, this line shows the faith which the young boy had in his grandfather's wisdom. And it also creates a sense of irony when we realize later in the poem that although his grandfather understands the horrors of war quite well, he is still not able to speak out against war. And then the old man shook his head. The old man took the object and immediately knew what it was. He felt sad. He shook his head and sighed involuntarily, feeling sorry because it was a human skull. He said that the skull belonged to some poor fellow, which means one of the many soldiers who were killed in the 
great victory great victory here refers to the battle of blenheim i find them in the garden for there is many here about and often when i go to plow the plowshare turns them out for many thousand men said he were slain in that great victory plowshare means the teeth of the plow now casper says that he regularly finds such skulls in the garden because so many are buried there and even when he plows the field it is a common occurrence to see skulls being brought up to the surface when the plowshare is turning up the soil along with the soil the plowshare also turns out human skulls now the visual imagery is striking here why because the soil is plowed in order to make it ready for sowing crops we plow the soil to eventually get nourishment from it but what nourishment can one get from a field where so many dead people are buried the poet reminds us that though the war took place long ago the effects are still felt the horrors cannot be buried away they are bound to eventually tumble out he goes on to say that not one or two but many thousand men were slain which means killed in that great victory now tell us what it was all about young peterkin he cries and little wilhelmine looks up with wonder waiting eyes now tell us all about the war and what they fought each other for we have seen in the previous stanzas that although the effects of war are horrifying the old man still keeps calling it a great victory and this is what makes his grandchildren eager to know all about the war young peterkin is so excited that he cries out eagerly to his grandfather to tell him all about it his sister little wilhelmine two things that she is going to hear a fantastic story which is why she looks up at casper with her eyes full of wonder and she is waiting for him to begin the story peterkin then asks casper to tell them all about the war and also the reason for the war what they fought each other for it was the english casper cried who put the french to rout but what they fought each other for i could not well make out but everybody said quoth he that it was a famous victory casper cried this means that casper became very excited thinking about the war and the famous victory he enthusiastically informed the children about the war he said that the war had been fought between the french and the english the english had defeated the french but he could not understand why they fought each other for what however casper quickly added that everybody said it was a famous victory the poet uses the word but to signify that what the battle was about is neither remembered nor considered significant by the common man the common man blindly follows what he is told without questioning caspo also says everybody said that it was a famous victory everybody here means the state propaganda as well as other commoners like him my father lived at blenheim then yon little stream hard by they burned his dwelling to the ground and he was forced to fly so with his wife and child he fled nor had he where to rest his head yon means yonder and hard by means quite near dwelling means house and fly means run away so casper was a child when the war was fought he says that his father lived at blenheim at that time near the little stream the enemy forces set his house on fire and it was completely burned down he was forced to run away with his wife and child but they had to wander about with no shelter now casper uses the words my father to convey that he himself was a child at that time unable to take decisions it was his father who was responsible for the family's safety and well-being casper's father ran away from blenheim with his wife and child but they could not find any place where they could get shelter with fire and sword the country round was wasted far and wide and many a childing mother then and newborn baby died 
but things like that you know must be at every famous victory so fire and sword means burning and killing wasted means ruined and childing means pregnant so all around the country even in the most far off places war caused its destruction fields and houses were set on fire or bombed with cannons people were killed with swords the country suffered much death and destruction many pregnant women and newborn babies also lost their lives so it was indeed very tragic that many innocent lives were lost even the lives of newborn babies unborn babies and their pregnant mothers were not spared it was horrifying but casper says that such things must be which means they are inevitable they are bound to happen at every famous victory so he subtly says that although the price was too high the fact that it was a famous victory justified it they say it was a shocking sight after the field was won for many thousand bodies here lay rotting in the sun but things like that you know must be after a famous victory so after the war ended with the english defeating the french the aftermath of the war was shocking the place was strewn with thousands of dead bodies it was difficult to make arrangements for a proper burial since they were in such large numbers the bodies were just left there lying in the open and they rotted in the sun so this was like wiping out every trace of civilized existence that we as men as human beings are so proud of so it was indeed terrible but such things are an inevitable part of a famous victory great praise the duke of malbro won and our good prince eugene why it was a very wicked thing said little wilhelmine nay nay my little girl quoth he it was a famous victory quoth means said casper says that the duke of malbro who was the english commander and prince eugene another successful military commander from austria won a lot of praise because of the victory now this surprises wilhelmine who protests that the battle was a very wicked thing not at all worthy of praise but old casper admonishes her by saying no no my little girl it was a famous victory and everybody praised the duke who this great fight did win but what good came of it at last quoth little peterkin why that i cannot tell said he but it was a famous victory so casper goes on trying to justify the war by saying that everybody praised the duke because he had won this great fight now peterkin could not make out why the duke was praised so he asked but in the end what good came out of the war what did the war achieve casper had no answer to this he replied that he did not know that but he kept on insisting that it was a famous victory the poem clearly brings to light the horrors of war through this conversation between an old man and his little grandchildren so when the grandfather keeps on talking about a great and famous victory the children are amazed and they want to know all about it because they think it must be something magnificent but as their grandfather talks about the death and destruction and suffering they are puzzled so now using their simple and straightforward logic they state that it was a very wicked thing and they ask what was the point of the war what good came out of it in the end the grandfather has no answers yet he does not agree with or even understand the views of the two children he just keeps on repeating that it was a famous victory and talks about the praise that the duke and prince received since they were the winners so the poem not only shows the effects and after effects of war but it also shows how state propaganda can totally brainwash the common man after being brainwashed the common man even blindly supports something that has only caused such widespread pain and suffering